This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny... Oh, no. I knew this was going to happen. Look, can I at least get through my introduction here? As I was saying, welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. That sound you hear is my email inbox lighting up with messages from the spiders who live in the uppermost corners of my studio. I know this because they've been after me for days. They are, well, they are angry that I haven't mentioned them lately. Let's hear a sampling of their emails, shall we? All right, here we go. Dear Rhea, there are no words that can adequately describe our ongoing outrage at your lack of... Okay, moving on. Dear Rhea, how dare you? That was the entire email. Dear Rhea, you've ignored us for long enough. I don't think I have. Let's see, what else? Oh, this is interesting. Dear Rhea, if you don't include clowns in your next story, we will start a mutiny. Hmm, that's an odd request. But I certainly don't want a mutiny on my hands. I'll see what I can do, okay? Can we hold the emails until I'm done with the story? Let's get to it. It's called Little Hedgehog Goes to the Circus. Take it away, George and AD. Remember the one, no pictures. Oh, no you have pictures. to imagine the imagine pictures any of in your mind. And you your can mind. imagine them imagine however you want. You okay, here, okay we go. here we go. Little Hedgehog and BB could not wait to go on a field trip to the Moth Museum. As they skipped off to school under a nearly full moon, they sang the Moth Museum song they had invented moments earlier. Moths! Moths! Moth Museum! Moths! Moths! Moth Museum! Moth Museum! Moths! Moths! Later, in math class with Mr. Parsnip, Now then, children, get your pencils ready. I've got a thrilling word problem about gophers, and I think you're really going to dig it. They quizzed each other on moth facts. Okay, BB, what is the largest moth on Earth? That would be Atticus Atlas, known colloquially as the Atlas Moth, whose wingspan is... But BB was interrupted by the intercom. Attention, students. This is Principal Petri Dish. (coughs) Excuse me. I have an important announcement regarding today's field trip to the Moth Museum. Little Hedgehog and BB leaned forward in their seats, their eyes dancing with moths. It is with great distress and not a small portion of regret that I share some news that just fluttered to my desk moments ago. The Moth Museum, the most popular field trip destination within our student body every single year, the one that is both educational and amusing with its entertaining shows and its well-thought-out displays... (coughs) Excuse me. The students blinked up at the intercom. That, Moth Museum, you may be asking at this point? Yes. That Moth Museum is closed due to a moth mutiny. I don't get it, muttered a young porcupine named Philip. Evidently, the moths have taken over. Field trips are out of the (coughs) question. Oh, no! This is the mother of all disappointments. Fear not, students. Upon learning this news, we leapt into action to arrange a trip today to another destination. I believe you will be pleased with what we've rustled up. Instead of a trip to the Moth Museum, you will be going to the fantastic, the lively, the astonishing... (laughs) What is happening? 
cried Juniper T. Whistlepig. I'm sure it'll be a satisfactory replacement, Mr. Parsnip said, glancing at the intercom with a doubtful expression. Where do you think we're going, guys? asked Forrester B. Pheasant. Probably nowhere as good as the Moth Museum, muttered Wimbleby Partridge. The rest of the students nodded to one another, except for Garth, a prairie dog who revealed little about himself. Instead of nodding along, Garth said, I bet we're going to the circus. There's no way we're going to the circus, Garth, said Juniper. That would be like a major upgrade from the Moth Museum. How could they possibly pull that off last minute? The rest of the students nodded in somber agreement. Garth shrugged, but said nothing. My apologies for that ill-timed interruption, students. I had a frog in my throat. Left over from breakfast. <laughs> Little Hedgehog and Bebe exchanged an amused look. Now then, where was I? Instead of a trip to the Moth Museum, you will be going to the circus. The classroom went silent as the students absorbed this information. They were momentarily torn between unbridled glee at the idea of visiting the circus and discomfort at the fact that somehow... Garth had correctly predicted their destination. Garth, for his part, had a satisfied smile on his face. At length, the room erupted in cheers. Little Hedgehog and BB clasped their teensy paws together and smiled, prickle to prickle. Yay! Yay! Minutes later, Little Hedgehog and BB stood with their classmates and teachers at the front of the school. After math class wrapped up, they'd all been ushered outside to wait for their transportation to arrive to take them to the forest circus. Good evening, students! Good evening! Good evening. Hi. I said, good evening, students. Good evening. Good evening. Well, that's better. <laughs> We've got to wake you up if you're going to the circus. Ginny, a reptile transport for you employee, stood before the students with twinkling eyes and a broad smile that perfectly matched the expression in the ID photo attached to the lanyard around her neck. BB, I can't wait to ride on turtles. It is always a delightful journey on a turtle's sturdy shell. But apparently, while the turtles at Reptile Transport for You ran a daily circuit to the Moth Museum, they did not go to the circus. Fear not, students, said Principal Petri Dish. We've arranged for an excellent reptile to take you directly to the circus. Isn't that right, Ginny? That's right, Principal Petri Dish. His name is Mr. Creepington, and he is on his way to pick you up at this very moment. Before he arrives, I'm going to go over a few safety details. No big deal, but also pay very close attention, kids. BB, how are we all going to fit on a single reptile? I was wondering the same thing. First, I just want to note, because it's always everybody's first question. Yes, Mr. Creepington has just eaten, and he is full. Now that that's out of the way... Little Hedgehog and BB exchanged a significant look. When you board Mr. Creepington, do not make any sudden movements. We want smooth, gradual movements. This will minimize any instinctual responses. The students and teachers began whispering to one another. Next... Once you are buckled in, please keep your paws, claws, and feet to yourself. You may hold on to your harness, 
but Mr. Creepington does not prefer to be touched directly. And we want to keep his attention on getting all of you to the forest circus in one piece. BB, I am in a lot of suspense about Mr. Creepington. Me too. We do offer a 97.2% safety guarantee, but in the event of an unforeseen emergency situation, our driver will activate a harness release and you will have a fair opportunity to leap to safety. Now get ready and remember all those minor but super important safety details because Mr. Creepington is coming this way. The small crowd of students and teachers heard Mr. Creepington before they saw him. And then they saw him. Has he eaten recently? Oh my. This is terrifying. This is so cool. My mom's not gonna like this. Wow, BB. I've never ridden on a snake before. Little Hedgehog trilled as Mr. Creepington slithered to a stop. A jolly-looking praying mantis sat on a little wooden seat behind the snake's head, wearing a red top hat and holding slim reins. Me neither. None of the students or the teachers had ridden on a snake before. It would be a thrilling, new, and 97.2% safe experience for them all. Still, for several seconds... No one went anywhere. They stood, bathed in moonlight, beside the lengthy creature, unsure what to do. Then Mr. Elmer, a grammar teacher known for his love of adverbs, climbed aboard in one graceful movement. Mr. Creepington did not flinch. Seeing Mr. Elmer survive, the rest of the students and teachers followed suit. Soon, they were all aboard, one after another, buckled into harnesses to keep them from falling off. The praying mantis snapped the reins and Mr. Creepington lurched forward. Soon, he was slithering at a nice pace, and the school slipped out of view. It was a delightful, if slightly jerky, ride. I can't wait to tell my dad we rode on a snake. He will be pleased to know we had such a whimsical adventure. After Mr. Creepington dropped them off, the students were ushered into the main circus tent. Wow, BB, I feel like we're stepping into a different world. My sentiments exactly. Everywhere they looked, there were swirling colors, bright lights, and thousands of bustling animals finding their seats, jogging up and down the bleachers to energize the crowd, selling treats from baskets strapped to their chests. Popcorn, get your hot, tasty, fresh popcorn. Best popcorn north of the ancient Why, nice gold popcorn. ginger root get tea. Your get your very own genuine ice cold ginger root tea. BB, can you believe we're at the circus? If I were blindfolded and wearing earmuffs, I would not believe it. They sat midway up the rows of bleachers with a good view of the enormous circular stage where dozens of frogs leapt through flaming hoops. If this is just the pre-show, the real show must be spectacular. Indeed. Little Hedgehog glanced around, taking in the sights. BB. Yes, Little Hedgehog. Does that hedgehog right in front of us look familiar to you? He does. The two tiny hedgehogs exchanged a look and nodded in unison. Little Hedgehog reached out a paw and tapped the hedgehog on the shoulder prickles. He whipped around and his eyes widened. Hello there. It was Cecil, an elder hedgehog who lived near Little Hedgehog's burrow. His pet cricket, Jemaine number 12, became visible on the shoulder prickles Little Hedgehog had not tapped. Hello, Mr. Cecil. Greetings, Jemaine. Haven't seen you two in ages. 
I've never seen those small-beaked echidnas, Cecil, the cricket said, a solemn expression on his tiny face. I don't remember them at all, and I would remember that one with the sparkling eyes, and I would remember that one too, the one with the serious expression. <clears throat> never you mind, Jermaine, never you mind. What brings you to the circus this evening? Cecil grinned, relieved at the shift in conversation. Jermaine here loves all things related to the circus. Isn't that right, Jermaine? Oh, yes. I love circus biographies, circus word searches, circus-themed horoscopes. Wow! Fascinating. Jermaine knows all sorts of interesting facts about this circus in particular. Isn't that right, Jermaine? That's right, Cecil. Do you? Please tell us an interesting fact. The cricket's eyes lit up, and he hopped excitedly. One interesting fact about this circus is that the ringmaster, Thomas G. Lightning, has been on the run, hiding in plain sight from a gang of rats known as the Sewer Kings for 11 years. Little Hedgehog and Bibi blinked. Uh, Jermaine, Cecil said with an uneasy smile. I thought you were going to tell them a fact. That is a fact, Cecil. I learned it from my book, Secrets of the Circus. Difficult to believe, yet 110% true circus facts. I was not aware something could be more than 100% true. But before Bibi could finish her thought, the lights went out. The tent was plunged into darkness. <gasps> what is happening? I bet the show is starting. Where are the frogs? Are they okay? A voice came over the loudspeaker. It is time to welcome your host for the evening, the leader of this legendary ring, the trumpeter of triumph, the orator of outlandishness, the proclaimer of pizzazz. Put your paws, claws, and feet together for the one, the only, your ringmaster for the evening, Tommy G. Lightning. The tent shuddered with the sound of thunder, and a spotlight fell upon the stage, revealing a towering elephant wearing a crimson vest and a bedazzled top hat. Bibi, I did not expect Tommy G. Lightning to be an elephant. Nor did I. But Tommy G. Lightning was not an elephant. The crowd leaned forward to get a good look as the elephant's top hat burst upward and sailed away through the air, revealing a plump mouse. <gasps> The mouse, dressed in a bright scarlet jacket with long coattails and a gleaming black top hat, leapt from the elephant's head, somersaulting several times. He's very coordinated, isn't he? Before sticking the landing in the center of the circular stage. Silver confetti burst from somewhere above fluttering down over Tommy G. Lightning, who flung out his paws and turned in a slow circle, beaming at the crowd. Behind him, the elephant plodded off stage. Once Tommy G. had flashed a toothy grin at every member of the audience, a circular cutout of the stage beneath his feet began rising up from the ground. A solid column, the width of a tree trunk, ascending until the ringmaster was at least 12 feet up. Amazing! Hello, hello, he bellowed. Welcome, one and all, to the legendary, magnificent, exhilarating, and dangerously entertaining Forest Circus. I wonder if there'll be clowns, Little Hedgehog whispered. And by the way, I can almost hear some of you wondering, will there be clowns in this circus? No, there will not. We are a clown-free circus, okay? 
Clowns make kids cry and parents cringe, so we gave them the boot. The crowd was pleased, including all the students, except for Garth, who said, I like clowns. But you know what we do have, kids? On cue, six gigantic Komodo dragons lurched on stage, parading in a circle around the perimeter. Komodo dragons! I love Komodo dragons. On each dragon's back was a pig doing flips. The pigs were all flipping in unison, landing perfectly at the same time, then immediately flipping again as the dragons crawled in a loop around the stage. Look at them go. Will you look at them go? I don't think I've ever seen such synchronization in all 11 years that I've been on the run with the circus. I mean, traveling with the circus. Little Hedgehog and BB exchanged a significant look. Did you hear that, BB? I did. Next up, four spry marmosets danced on the stage, each wheeling an enormous cannon. They proceeded to line up the cannons on one end of the stage. Meanwhile, four more marmosets each wheeled an enormous tank of water and set them directly opposite the cannons. All right, all right, everybody get ready for the most amazing, most shocking, most tremendous performance in all of history. Who do you think is in those cannons, BB? I could not even begin to guess. Hippos. Gigantic hippos came launching out of the cannons, one after another. Each one traveled in a lofty arc, then landed in a water tank sending a tremendous spray over a segment of the audience. It is odd, Bibi said, turning to Little Hedgehog. If pressed, I would have guessed hippos. It just seems so unlikely that I dismissed it out of paw. Hmm. Just then, a hippo landed in the water tank closest to them, and a wave crashed over the students. Whee! But my mom said not to get wet today. So refreshing. Little Hedgehog and BB grinned, drenched from prickles to feet. The circus kicked into high gear. There was the so-called strongest raccoon on Earth who could throw a gorilla across stage. Wow. A chimp juggling geckos while riding on a unicycle baton-twirling bats, fire-eating fish, stilt-walking giraffes, whose heads brushed up against the ceiling of the tent, and tightrope-walking sloths. And now for our final spectacular act of the evening. Tommy G boomed from a raised platform on one end of the stage. The world-famous... Critically acclaimed, heart-stopping, eye-popping, weasel trapeze artists. Some circuses, they want their acrobats to fly in the trapeze with the greatest of ease. What kind of show is that? Doesn't sound very dangerous, does it? At Forest Circus, our acrobats fly with the least amount of ease. We picked the least talented weasel acrobats we could find. Those weasels do seem a bit awkward, BB. Indeed. And we'd be remiss if we didn't add some hungry crocodiles down below. Or alligators. I always get those mixed up. A handful of crocodiles and or alligators appeared on stage, roving around beneath the weasel swinging above, snapping and gnashing their teeth. This is dangerously entertaining, BB. Or entertainingly dangerous. <laughs> but as the weasels did their ungainly swings through the air, Coming perilously close to the reptiles below, the tent itself let out a shiver 
dozens of small figures repelled from the ceiling of the tent, descending on ropes. Bibi, yes, little hedgehog. Do those look like rats? Directly in front of them, Jemaine number 12 whirled around on Cecil's shoulder prickles and gave both tiny hedgehogs a significant pointed look. Indeed, they were the scraggliest, scariest, beadiest-eyed rats anyone had ever seen. If they'd been part of the circus, they'd be introduced as world's most terrifying rats. Or something more creative than that. You get the idea. But they were not part of the circus, a fact which became very obvious once Tommy G. Lightning caught a glimpse of them scurrying towards his raised platform. Ah! Just before the biggest rat could snatch him up by the tail, Tommy G. yelped Ah! and leapt down from his platform. Above, the inept weasels continued to swing obliviously. Below, the crocodiles slash alligators snapped their teeth. Tommy G. began a harrowing journey, wending his way around the ferocious reptiles. You can run, but you can't hide in plain sight any longer, yelled the biggest rat, who could only be the leader of the gang. Get him, boys. Dozens of rats lunged at Tommy G. as he darted around the stage, narrowly missing snapping teeth and the swipes of the Sewer King's paws. Principal Petri Dish rose from her seat down the row, her eyes frantic above a strained smile. Children, everything's going to be just fine. Don't be scared. But the children were not scared. They were riveted. A chase was on. It was by far the most exciting part of the show. Go, Tommy G. Run! He's gonna make it. Wow, man, he's not gonna make it. The audience went wild as the ringmaster dashed this way and that in a fight for his life. Just as a trio of sewer kings encircled him, one of the acrobatic weasels swung all the way down to the stage and grabbed Tommy G, sweeping him up from the ground. Wow, BB, I guess at least one of the weasels is talented. Indeed. The weasel and the ringmaster swung through the air with moderate ease. At the edge of their swing, the ringmaster leapt off, dropping to the ground out of sight. Chaos erupted inside the tent as the Sewer King swarmed the area, searching for the ringmaster. Then came the thunderous sound of a cannon off stage. The crowd watched, astonished, as Tommy G. Lightning went soaring through the air, pointed skyward, and blasted through the ceiling of the tent leaving a gaping hole and disappearing altogether. There was hardly time to react to this before the tent began to shudder and sway. Animals leapt from their seats and scrambled down the aisles to escape. Ginger root tea and papa corn went flying through the air as the circus workers abandoned their posts and made for the exits. Principal Petri Dish leapt from her seat once more. Don't panic, children. Nothing to worry about. I'm sure this is completely planned. That's when the tent really began to collapse. A stampede of animals went running, leaping, and flying for the exits. A voice came over the loudspeaker. Attention, everyone. Please remain calm. I repeat, please remain calm. We must file out in an orderly fashion. No one listened. Principal Petri Dish did, but no one else. Until... If you do not remain calm, 
we will be forced to send in the clowns. I repeat, if you do not remain calm, we will send in the clowns. The crowd immediately simmered down, filing out quickly and quietly. Little Hedgehog and BB scampered out with their classmates. Just as the final animal slipped through the tent flaps, the circus tent itself crashed to the ground. Bebe, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Little Hedgehog said as Principal Petri Dish did another head count of the group outside the collapsed tent. Twelve, thirteen, fifteen... I mean, that those were in fact alligators snapping at the heels of the swinging weasels. It was clear from the shape of their snouts. Interesting, but no. That Jemaine number 12 was entirely correct about Tommy G. Lightning hiding in plain sight with the traveling forest circus for 11 years and that it was a remarkable coincidence that we happened to visit the circus on the precise day that they finally discovered his whereabouts. That's true, Phoebe, but that's not what I was thinking. Please tell me immediately. I was thinking... But Little Hedgehog was interrupted by Mr. Creepington slithering to a stop beside the students. For the record, he has just eaten... Once they were all strapped into their harnesses, Bibi swiveled to speak to Little Hedgehog, who was seated directly behind her. Little Hedgehog, what were you thinking? I must know. I was thinking, maybe we'll get to go to the Moth Museum in our next field trip. Perhaps the mutiny will be quelled. They should bring in the clowns. That would do it. The two best friends giggled. Then... They ended their night the way they'd started it. Moths. Moths. Moth Museum. Moths. Moths. Moth Museum. Moth Museum. Moths. Moths. Ah, they must be thanking me for the clowns. Let's see. Dear Rhea. No clowns actually appeared in this story. We will begin our mutiny. What? No, no, you can't do that. Ugh. You try to please spiders, this is what you get. I better go deal with this. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. Hey, do not swing at me. My in-house tech director, Peter K., runs my website and puts my stories in the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to my Little Stories premium subscribers who are making it possible for me to keep doing this. If you'd like to get more of the stories you love, access to Little Stories for Sleep, an exclusive bedtime podcast, and ad-free listening, join or gift a subscription by visiting littlestoriespremium.com. Thank you to George and AD for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to the many premium subscribers who supplied sound effects used in this story. Thank you to Isla, Hannah, Maxwell, Jeremiah, May, Mia, Jules, Max, Annie, Ivy, Fiona, Summer, Audra, Annabelle, Harper, Amaya, Case, Mina, Eloise, Ona, Connor, Imogen, Maeve, and Ronan. And thank you, as always, for listening in.